there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. It is hot out here. Today we're going to be cutting up an oak tree. So we had a double oak in our yard that was rotten out at the bottom. While we had the excavator crew here, we went ahead and knocked it over, pulled the stump, smoothed out the area. I hated to cut this tree. It's like this big around. It's a huge tree. Today we're going to cut it up. We're going to chip up the brush. We're going to cut up the firewood. It's hot outside. It's supposed to get up to like 92 degrees. Yeah. We're going to be burning up. Mrs. Stony Ridge has got her chainsaw. Ready. And we <laughs> have got the man chainsaw here. So <laughs> we happened to pick up a 36 inch bar for our holes form a chainsaw. I think this thing is almost as tall as <laughs> Mrs. Stony Ridge right here. So come along today as we have a little bit of fun. This shirt is going to be drenched. She's going to be drenched. We're both going to be tired. It's going to be a long, hot morning here. Working with some wood, we'll throw the drone up in the air and we'll show you a little bit about how we choose the length of wood for these logs. So some of these logs we're going to be using for saw logs, for building barns and fences and pig pens and all kinds of fun stuff. So come along on the farm vlog today. We're going to put this big boy to work and we're going to put this little girl to work. We'll have a little bit of fun. It'll be awesome. All right? Woo! Stony Ridge. From Stony Ridge. Stony Ridge Farm. Come on in here closer, Mrs. Stony Ridge. <laughs> this is a message for Safety Sam. Safety Sam, Mrs. Stony Ridge, are you an expert chainsaw user? No. Am I an expert chainsaw no. user? Do we claim to be expert chainsaw people? Not at all. Safety Sam, <laughs> this little saw is, this is gonna be Mrs. Stony Ridge's first time starting a chainsaw. So you're gonna get a show, Safety Sam. And any of you guys that wanna leave some condescending comments down there about, you're not using a chainsaw right. I'm a chainsaw scientist. I've been doing this for 57 years and I'm a derby derby do. I don't care. We're guys and gals on our farm. We're cutting up a tree. It's just fun, man. Just have fun. It's good. Have fun. Start this thing, girl. All right. I give her a pull. Look at that. Now pull your chain brake right here. Now squeeze it. Come on now. There you go. Now cut it off. Put that button up. What do you think? It's got some power. <laughs> first time ever starting that saw. That was first pull? Was that first pull? That was the first pull. First pull, fired it right up. <laughs> Farm girl, baby. <laughs> Put her in front of a camera, she'll give you a show. So while we're in the shade and we're getting everything all fueled up, getting the chainsaws all ready, it's always a process trying to get all this stuff ready. I want to show you some of the tools of the trade that we're going to be using. We're going to be using three different chainsaws. And what we're using to fuel these chainsaws up is something cool, something that my wife got me for Christmas. It is a all-in-one it's by Husqvarna but it's an all-in-one chainsaw oil so bar oil and fuel container and it has a little toolbox in here you can open it up and we've got I guess I can open it up it's hard to open up when it's on the other side of you <laughs> little rubber thing here I've got a canister of uh, oil in there of two cycle oil and I also have my bar lubricator right inside there and you can put a few other little tools I put a carb adjustment tool in there a little screwdriver on the other side you can store a flat file you can store your chainsaw file and your little chainsaw wrench right there these are the safety spec type fillers but the cool thing is this is designed to drop right inside of your filler neck on your chainsaw and it just slips back whoop, just like so and fills your chainsaw up so you don't have to worry about carrying around a cap you don't have to worry about losing the cap you can toss this thing in the back of your pickup truck now this one is the bar oil and you just unscrew and pour your oil in it also has a breather tube see it right there so that it doesn't go glug 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 and make a big old mess on your tailgate because if you're like me i'm famous for filling up my saws on the tailgate and i'm also famous for overfilling the daggone bar oil and making it go all over my tailgate so this thing's pretty cool pretty easy to use i'll post the link in the video description for you may as well do a little demonstration basically i just dip the nozzle in and i just press down and it fills up 
just like so. I can hear it gurgling, gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. When it gets full, all I do is simply pop the lid off. This is actually my first time using it and it stopped once it reached the top. So in other words, you turn this thing upside down, press it down in there. Once it fills the fuel tank up, it stops. That's rad. Let's show you the rest of the tools and the chainsaws we're gonna be using. The Big Daddy saw is awesome. Let's get this one out in the open too. There are a lot of guys out there that are, I'm an Echo guy, and I'm a steel guy only, or I love Husqvarna, or I love Johnson Red Saws. They're the best saw ever. Well, let's just tell you this. I don't have a chainsaw brand loyalty card in my pocket. I don't subscribe to chainsaw brand loyalty whatsoever. So we're gonna be using multiple brands of chainsaws here because these are what I have on the farm and I use them because that's what I like to do. I like my still MS-170. I think the new one is the MS-171. This saw is nice, it's easy, I can handle it with one hand, which you should not do, and Mrs. Stony Ridge can actually run this saw. It's really, really lightweight. I'm talking really, really lightweight. I love this saw, it's my go-to saw, it's what I keep on the gator and on the tractor. The next saw we'll be using is my Husqvarna Rancher, my 460 Rancher. It's got a 24 inch bar, I love this saw. It's a great saw. If you did not catch my comparison video between this and the Still MS311, check it out. It'll be a link at the end of the video in the end credits. You can check out that video. I compared this saw to the MS311. Both these saws are in the $500 range. This is a great farm and ranch saw. This is Big Daddy. <laughs> this is <laughs> the Holes Forma, otherwise known as the china saw this is the g660 china saw i believe it's a 92 cc we've got a 36 inch bar on this saw and it is an absolute oh, shoulder cutting beast <laughs> this thing is a monster of a saw it is i guess the chinese copy of the 660 steel i think it's called the ms660 uh, it's a commercial grade type saw this is what I'm told as the Chinese version of that. So when we made a video comparing the G660 to the 066 still, we got all kinds of flack, but this saw costs $300 where the 066 is over $1,000. So you gotta think dollars and cents here. Am I a commercial sawyer? No. Is that a bad ass commercial saw? Yes, it is. And we're gonna use it today, it's gonna to be fun. That's what it's all about. I'm not gonna be using this saw to make a living, but I am gonna be using this saw to have something big to cut big trees on our farm and possibly run a chainsaw mill. Do I wanna blow up a $1,000 saw or do I wanna blow up a $300 saw? I think I want to blow up a $300 saw. There are two more tools that we're going to be breaking out of the arsenal for this. We're going to be using this Keeson brand measuring tape for measuring our logs for cutting our lengths of log for cutting lumber out of it. So basically we'll stretch this out. I'll have Mrs. Stony Ridge stretch it out. We'll measure out our logs to see what point we cut our logs to get the optimum amount of lumber out of this big old oak log. And there are two big oak logs. And the next thing we'll be using while we're cutting up our firewood out of the pieces that we can't use for timber, in other words, for cutting up uh, boards, we'll be using our three-in-one forestry multi-tool from Logox, guys. There'll be a coupon code in the video description from Logox. If you guys wanna pick yourself up one of these, you'll get to see it at work today. This is also a cant hook to help us roll over our logs for when we cut, and we'll just cut down into them, and then we'll roll it over, and we'll finish our cuts. Lots of firewood gonna come out of this and lots of saw log gonna come out of this. We'll probably get enough timber here, probably to build some raised beds or something like that, or to work on a fence project here on the farm.
right, guys, here we are. This is the brush that we'll be chipping up. We're going to be cutting it up. We're going to be putting this through a BX62S. This is from Titan Attachments. We reached out to the Titan Attachments folks probably a month and a half ago when we first got the wood chipper. They sent us a coupon code. There'll be a coupon code down in the video description. If I'm not mistaken, the coupon code for this will be Stone Chip, I think, or Stony Chip. I'll post it down there in a comment and I'll post it in the video description. We're going to be using the Massey Ferguson 240 tractor. It's got 41 PTO horsepower. You can see the brush that will be chipped up here and you can see that this tree has some leaves on it but it didn't come back in some places and that's the risk that you run clearing land all this was forested before and now it's pasture. When you're clearing land we wanted to leave some select big awesome trees that one did not make it the oak trees are the hardest now this big old log <laughs> that i'm getting ready to sit down on is what we're going to be using for saw log that's going to be super awesome so we've got a big nice pretty straight saw log that's going to be perfect all this brush will have to be chipped up and what can be used for firewood we'll cut up into firewood or we'll cut up into sections and take up to our neighbor who burns wood year round so Neighbors helping neighbors, chippers helping chippers, and a lot of hard work and a lot of hard sweat going to go into this. So the heavy oak branches, they're green oak branches, but the heavy oak branches will go inside of here and it'll take up to three or four inch material and they'll blast out of this hopper. And this hopper is aimable. In other words, I'll aim it out here, then I'll slowly rotate it around so that this whole area gets a coating basically of wood chips which will provide biomass for the soil and eventually help the grass grow this was dirt two years ago just dirt this is all planted grass here that we put this was forest three years ago awesome how do i start the tractor this one here i push it in okay so push that in okay turn that in um, to the s okay s to start so do i push the clutch in which one's a clutch? Okay, push that one. Now I'm on S. Now what else do I need to do? Oh, I need to make sure I'm in neutral. My brake is pulled. Kill switch is in. Then I have to start it. Cool. Now, we'll put it in low. And we'll let the tractor warm up to optimum running temperature before we fire up the wood chipper. I'm running Mrs. Stony Ridge through the starting procedure on this tractor because you never know one day she might have to get it out from on top of me. <laughs> so it's a good thing for her to know every little intricate detail of every little piece of machinery on the farm. So we practice this kind of stuff. It's good stuff to know. She's a farm girl. She's got to know. And she's got to know how to shut that saw off in case it gets on top of me. And she's got to know how to cut that tractor off in case it gets on top of me. I think one of the number one killers of young men and women in the United States or in the world are farm accidents. So we really got to pay attention to what we're doing and try and be safe. I'm going to put on my helmet, my face shield, and my chaps for this, even though it's burning up hot. If there were an emergency and you had to shut the tractor off, what would you do? Pull the kill switch. Exactly. Do you think that my teachings sometimes become redundant? Sometimes. Do you think it's sometimes we're sarcastic toward one another? Sometimes. Do you think that that's productive? No. I don't think so either. You ready to work hard? Yes. Ready for a kiss? Yes. All right. <laughs> I love my wife. I love my farm. I love my life. And I hope she never ever has to save my life. So the first saw we're going to be using is a little MS-170. It's the simplest saw to use. It's lightweight, it's easy, and we'll be limbing up with this saw. Anything bigger than what we need to cut with this is going to be firewood. So all this little stuff is going to go right in the chipper. Remember, this is oak going into this chipper, so it's some heavy-duty stuff. We're not going to be chipping up really big stuff. It's about this big, okay? This is the size of my ring, my ring finger right here. So it's about that big. We're going to feed it to the side here. Like so. It self feeds. In other words, it feeds itself and sucks it through on its own. Let's let Mrs. Stony Ridge give it a shot. She 
wants to try this, I'm gonna encourage her if she can't get it to let me do it. I that's a big machine. She's a small lady. That's a big machine. That's a lot to work with right there. I think she'll do all right. The worst thing you can do with a machine like this is lack confidence. You gotta be strong, you gotta be confident, you gotta be intelligent when you're handling something like this. Are you a little tired? Yeah, I'm not as dirty as you are. We're going to see y'all in the morning. I found a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Come out here at sun up and finish the rest of it. See you in the morning. Well, I survived the night. It's the next morning. It's a beautiful day. That kicked me and Mrs. Stony Ridge's butt. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm slipping my chaps back on. Temperature is not 90 degrees anymore. It's more like yeah, 72. So you guys have all seen firewood cut probably. If you've never cut firewood, then you should get out there and cut some firewood sometimes. What we're gonna talk about this morning more than anything, I'm really impressed with the wood chipper. This works, guys. This actually works. Spreading wood chips on the land like this, and we'll run back over this with the landscape rake to kind of spread out any pile. See, that got a little bit thick right there, but we'll rake back over it with the landscape rake and try to spread out any piles like that but this will help the soil retain moisture and in a year or so you'll notice that this area right here will be greener than the rest of the field so when we pull up here with the uh with the chipper you can see there are some sparse areas and you can see a little bit more right here. So there's some clay sparse areas and what we'll do is park our chipper up here and blow those chips into these sparse areas. Then we'll take Reiki Bobby, the landscape rake, and we'll rake over top of these sparse areas and we'll spread those wood chips over these areas. And that's gonna help bring the soil back here on the farm. That's what the whole goal of having the wood chipper is totally now let's walk down to the log and we'll take our measuring tape and i'll talk to you a little bit about the length of the log that we're going to cut so that we can get the best amount of lumber out of it so if there's any education i want you to take home from this video it is about logs logging and how to measure your logs for keeping now i'm not a total scientist on this i don't know everything there is to know there's a million and one different ways but let's talk first about the diameter of this log so we're going to measure right across here and we're going to see that the width of this log is two foot and two inches of usable lumber in this log now we're going to go we've got another one almost exactly the same size right over here it's probably about two feet we're going to go along the length of the log now you can see the saw that i'm using here today this is just a little ms 170 we're just going to mark the places that we're going to cut this log with the ms 170 and you'll understand a little bit better here in just a minute we got to talk about the shape of the log and what makes the most sense to get the optimum amount of lumber out of this log so let's get up here and look at the length of the log. We're gonna take our tape and we're gonna stretch it out on our log right here. Mrs. Stony Ridge is at work, so it's just gonna be us today, guys. But we're gonna stretch out to about right here. Okay, so I have 20, about 25 feet to this uh, bifurcation right here to where the trunk splits now I've got a big beautiful log it's a uniform size pretty much all the way through here so what I want to do is I want to get a 16 foot cut out of this so if I want a 16 foot cut out of this there's going to be a tiny bit of waste so I want to go about 16 foot 
three 16 foot four inches. I'll bring you in closer with the camera so you can see. So here's what I'm talking about basically. This is a two foot diameter log, okay? So we're gonna go all the way up here and you see it's about uniform size. It's just about the same size. So this is gonna make some great lumber. It's gonna make for an easy cut. Right here is our 17 foot mark. So right back here is our 16 foot mark. We wanna go at about 16 foot three inches. That's where we wanna cut. We wanna pull that tape tight and we wanna go at about 16 foot three inches. We just wanna mark this really quickly. So what we'll do is we'll take a piece of bark and we'll lay it right there and then we'll cut it right there. Now, we decided that we had about 25 feet of usable lumber here. Well, and taking a closer look, about 24 feet of usable lumber is what we really have because of this bifurcation or the split in the trunk right here. So this would have to basically be cut off and that's what we'll do. And we can utilize the lumber up to about 24 foot, three inches right here. That way we'll get an eight foot cut here and a 16 foot cut here. So we'll go ahead and mark that, but we won't mark it at 24 foot three. We'll mark it about 24 foot seven. That way we've got a little bit of wiggle room. We'll cut this big branch off right here. This will be utilized for firewood. This is big enough to cut a little bit more out of it. So we'll take our tape and we'll measure up probably just past this knot right here. And that's where it starts to get thin and splits and we won't be able to utilize that lumber. So that will be firewood probably past this bifurcation right here where it splits. So now you can see a little bit of the science and the thought process that goes in behind cutting a big tree like this. This is a big tree and we're gonna utilize a whole lot of lumber. I'm not sure how many board foot it's gonna be. There is a calculator you can get and calculate the size and the length and get the board footage. I don't have that calculator. I don't know all of it, but I'm learning, I'm growing. And as soon as I learn, I'll teach you. Now we have a similar scenario with this. So this was a big white oak, a double white oak. It was a huge, beautiful tree, but at the bottom it was starting to rot. So this is a similar scenario. We've got a long, tall, straight, even tree, which is perfect for cutting, but we have a little bulge at the bottom right here. So we've got to take into account that that is bulging out at the bottom right here, and there's going to be some waste right there. We also have to look at the butt end and make sure it's healthy guess what let's get a close-up here's where this tree was not healthy that's not good so it wouldn't hurt me to cut off a little bit of this swollen butt end right here so it wouldn't hurt me to probably take it back to about right there and utilize that as a piece of firewood and then utilize the rest of it as a piece of lumber timber to make lumber awesome so this is our big saw this is big daddy this is our holes forma g660 it is uh i believe a 92 cc saw this is a monster of a chainsaw this is going to be our first cut with it we actually bought this saw after we put together my neighbor's saw so we did a video way back when i'll post a link to it comparing this g660 to the 066 still it's basically a very 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 similar saw most of the components on this will swap part for part on the uh, 066 still or the MS660, I believe is what it's called. But let's fire this thing up. This is a monster to run. We're gonna cut the butt end of this off before we get started so that we know what we've got. In other words, I wanna cut the end that's got the ants in it off. And a lot of times, I'll set the saw down here. A lot of times when you see the end of a tree swollen out, at the bottom like that, it means there's some disease, there's some issue down there, and that's why it's swollen out like that. And I recognize that in this tree, and that's why we pushed it over. So it was close to the power lines, close to my gate down here, and we did not want it to fall on the gate or the power lines and cause a future problem, and we can use the lumber. So let's fire up this big saw, it's a monster. Mash our compression release right there, and just the same as the steel saw, you pull the trigger, Put your choke all the way down. We've got to start this one on the ground. She's a monster. We'll lock our chain brake and fire her up. This is the first pull, guys. This is no joke, first pull today. Awesome. So, just as with the steel, we'll turn it back just like this to the uh, high idle position. And we'll fire it up again. Mash the compression release. Step in. Here we go. Ah. 
Nice. You can see here, we are right through to some beautiful wood. That saw made quick work of it. <laughs> that thing is a beast of a saw. Holy cow. So that's what we'll be using to make all of our big cuts today. We'll be using that big saw. Super happy with it. Super impressed. 300 bucks versus a thousand bucks. I'll never wear that saw out. I don't think I will. And I'll keep you guys posted as to any troubles I might have with it or whatever. I know a lot of people look online. It's uh, Holesforma or farmertech.com, I think. But I'll keep you posted. That's a monster bar. Normally, we'd run a 20-inch bar on that thing or a 24-inch bar on it. But for this big stuff, we're going to put the Big Daddy bar on it. That's the biggest chainsaw I've ever ran. Part of running a chainsaw in a tree that's like this with limbs that are all over everywhere in my opinion is starting at the little end in other words starting at the big end sets you up for the tree to roll back and forth start at the little end and work your way up high to the ground now you really shouldn't cut over top of your head that's fairly unsafe things can fall on your head things can fall on your feet that's why I always wear steel toes you also have to watch for limbs that are in a bind so this tree will hurt you this tree will swing back and pop you you stand over a limb and you cut it and it's between your legs it'll come right up and boop pop you cut you harm you give you stitches these trees will hurt you guys you really have to pay attention to what you're doing you really do case in point right here you see this limb that's on the ground right here that's supporting this entire part of the trunk right here. If I start cutting on that, or if I cut it back here, this whole trunk could roll over right here while I'm in the middle of it. And it could throw me out of it, it could throw the saw into me, it could hurt me really bad. So I really have to pay attention to what I'm doing here. That's where having the log ox really helps. And I'll show you in a minute. As we drop bigger stuff onto the ground, one of the biggest dangers, especially here on the Stony Ridge Farm, for your chainsaw is hitting the ground or hitting rocks. Well, we got rocks we got lots of rocks the timber jack really helps to jack up the tree get it off the ground save your back and save your saw from hitting rocks so we won't have to resharpen our chainsaw after cutting all this oak we won't hit any rocks <laughs> man there's just something satisfying about running a chainsaw <laughs> Look at that. That's some work right there, buddy. Sometimes we find ourselves in a pinch such as this. <laughs> I cut all the way through and the log moved about a half an inch and thus stuck my saw. So I've got, this is the Log Ox um, three-in-one forestry multi-tool. Basically it's the cant hook part of it. And all I'm gonna do is push a little bit with the cant hook <laughs> and get my saw back. Come on out of there, boy. There ain't many can hooks that'll hook a two foot diameter log and roll it over like this. And this kind of thing happens. You're cutting big stuff. Woo. Got her out. And kick my butt, man. <laughs> a lot of saw to run <laughs> oh guys I hope you enjoyed this video today we'll end with a little bit of drone footage what I'll do here is I'll get my pallet forks on the tractor right now the Jeep frame is still on the pallet forks I'll take the pallet forks on the tractor we'll come over here pick up these logs we'll carry them up to my log pile basically the job for the morning here is to cut up the firewood get the logs take them over there get them staged up Hopefully by the end of the week, my uh, guy can come and he can start sawing up my logs. 55 bucks an hour, it's a little bit expensive. I gotta have two guys here to help me out. Uh, word of note, when you're running a saw with a bar this big, it takes a lot of bar oil. So you gotta be a little bit gentle with it. If you guys have any tips 
or any pointers, please let me know. This is a lot of chain. You kind of got to break this chain in slow. There's a whole lot of technique and stuff that goes along with it. So a lot of you pro guys out there, if you're watching this, post some comments down there. Tell us what we should do when we got a, a bar this big. It's a monster, monster saw. We're all here to learn. We're all here to have fun. So thanks a lot for joining me here on the Stony Ridge. Guys, pound that like button, subscribe to the channel. If this is your first time here, I appreciate you. We got some work to do. It's getting hot. We got to get the tractor, got to get the Jeep frame off the tractor, get it in the garage, get it in the shop, load up all this stuff. Got some mowing to do later today. I got a full day of activities and it's only Monday. <laughs> Good stuff. We'll see you guys next time on the Stony Ridge. Yeah, baby. Woo!